What is going on everybody? It's your boy Captain Jack. Welcome back to another adventure. We are getting after it on another jet ski mission. We got PJ with us. He already got suited up ahead of time so he's chilling and uh, those of you who don't know these wetsuits are very warm because uh, they insulate but uh, once you're in that water it's nice to stay nice and toasty. But we're gonna do some flashing. We're gonna hope for some pelagics. Oh and those of you who don't know the ski this is just a standard Yamaha. You can do it with any three-seater. Um, honestly, these jet skis are not three-seaters. <laughs> Try fitting three people, three human big people, yeah. it's tough. But I got the flashers hanging off the front. We got our fins tucked in the side. Guns, chum, flag. And uh, I have this cooler that I mounted with some turnbuckles on the back. And that just has clean ice. And then we got the fish bag tucked away in here. And uh, as we shoot fish, we'll throw them in the fish bag, in the gunnels. We'll have our fins on out there. Um, you'll kind of be seeing how I rock everything off offshore. Uh, we get it done though. We get it done in the ski. Not the easiest job. Could use a bigger ski, but uh, you know, we'll make do. And also for GPS, all I do is I got this little hatch and I got my phone in there and I just run some Navionics hit it, hitting some uh, hitting some wrecks, some deep ledges, and that's how we get from point A to B. And that's how we slay some fish. I'm going to finish gearing up and I'll see you out there on the water. You like this thing? 1.5 mil closed cell. No soap needed. If you like this, head to Spear America. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, everybody, I done messed up. If you haven't seen my last video, you could see that I was using the third lung and took my snorkel off, and of course it stayed off. So, showed up out there without the snorkel. The viz is absolutely crystal clear, uh, but diving has made it uh, really tough. So, um, but yeah, so I'm chilling here. PJ went to grab a snorkel from a local dive shop, eating my Vienna sausages having a little break but it's the day is early we're still gonna get after it and uh yeah so just a slight delay slight delay kind of sucks but you live and learn my ma snorkel is never ever gonna come off my mask ever again all right we made it got the new snorkel on our way back out we're gonna skip the child's play stuff and we're gonna dive something deep so see you guys out there in the blue All right, you guys, welcome back underwater. So now I have my GoPro on, and the problem is I forgot to shut it off. So the next clip you'll see is me chumming a little bit, and we're in about 200 feet of water, and there's a mahi come rolling in. I did not know my GoPro was on, so I shut it off. So I didn't get any of PJ Spear in this nice little mahi. It's been a long time since I speared one, and these are super fast-growing fish. Pretty stoked on this being our first fish in the box. All right, so that was amazing. PJ, bringing home the bacon. I don't think my GoPro is running. I uh, jumped in and uh, forgot to shut it off, and then when I went to turn it on, it was already running, so I shut it off. But you saw the aftermath, got a nice little uh, mahi. Those things grow super fast, so, uh, and they gotta be 20 inches. That one's well over like 24. So stoked we got dinner. We're gonna make another drift on that place. Amped up. We're getting into fish. Got him in the uh, got him in the fish bag. Gonna make another drop. Hopefully we see something. Fingers crossed. So there's a little thunderstorm behind us. That's old PJ. Ain't no thunderstorm never hurt nobody. But honestly, I'm not too worried about thunderstorms. We're a little too low um, to get hit by lightning. And if we do get hit, it wouldn't hurt because it, it happened really fast. So the new spot that we're in is at about a 90 foot depth and there's a giant barge just out in the middle of the sand. So now whenever we're diving these, it's hard to kind of hunt the bottom because the current's moving so fast and uh, you don't really want to be sitting on the bottom while your buddy diver and boat just keep drifting. 
So I kind of just do a little thing where I hover over this wreckage. I make some grunty noises, hoping to bring some yellow jacks or maybe hoping some kind of snapper or grouper pops his head out of a hole. And then uh, I'll at least know somebody's home. Then I can further hunt and fish this area. But uh, on this drift, nothing really happened. So we went up to the surface and uh, I know there's some rubble beyond this. So we go ahead and do a little bit of chumming and hoping that a mutton comes in off of the reef. That's exactly what happened. PJ went down in the chum slick that we created and probably in about 40 feet, 50 feet, uh, he was able to go down, catch this mutton in the midwater column and get a shot. Yes, sir, dude. Nice work. Nice job, dude. Hell yeah. Um, you want to gut him? Yeah, I'll gut him. Yeah, gut him and uh, we'll reuse that. PJ said what happened was exactly what I said was going to happen. I did a little chumming and uh, I told him there was like maybe a legal sized mutton down there. He made a drop. That fish came in super chum, dunk, chum drunk. I hit my GoPro right as he shot him. Shot him mid water column. See, and he probably, we're diving this 80 foot stuff, but he shot that fish at like 40. So. You don't have to go super deep to get these fish. PJ's reloading. We're gonna reset and uh, try to find some good bottom again. Do the same thing. We're gonna recycle this mutton. Good little mutton, not for dinner. And uh, we're gonna recycle. We're gonna uh, gut him and then uh, throw the uh, remains back in and uh, maybe pull up another fish. So see you guys again. So our last drift, last spot, last dive, we were kind of coming to the end, of the end of this rubble. PJ made a drop, he started coming up and was pointing down like he saw something and sure enough, that's what I spotted. Uh, I didn't even give him a chance to get to the surface. I just went down, took after whatever he was pointing at and it was a nice mutton. Followed him all the way to the bottom, landed the shot and I knew, I had a feeling some sharks were around and sure enough, here comes one darting in. Um, shortly after and one of the main things I did on this fish is I didn't shoot and just try to kick to the surface I shot and just tried to pull the fish to me and you can see once I get that fish to me the shark kind of leaves it alone because there's nothing struggling in the water anymore and also the goliath there at the bottom kind of just took it easy because there was no struggle in the water after I got a hold of the, f the fish and I'll deal with him once I get to the surface. And that's a big rule of thumb I can uh, give to everybody. Sure enough, the sharks were still curious, but uh, it wasn't that big of a deal. I knew the sharks weren't going to attack because there was no serious struggle in the water. Hell yeah. Getting it done on the ski. Stud. Mutton, not stud, but a very, very good mutton. Just gonna go and throw them in the cooler here. Got some, uh, now we got that PJ's good mutton. I got that mutton. We got Mahi. Man, what a day. What a mixed bag. Solid. That was a uh, really, that was really good buddy diving. I was uh, at the surface and PJ was just pointing down and uh, I didn't even know, I didn't even wait for him to get to the surface to ask him what it was. I just went ahead, made a drop and, uh, Short after I saw what he was talking about, and it was a mutton. This guy was just kind of trailing down towards the bottom. Uh, there were a couple of sharks in the area, but I didn't pay them any attention. Um, started following him. He was giving me the tail wag. Kind of was patient. Finally gave me somewhat of a broadside shot, and I, I laced him. Kind of got him in the meat, but you know, better to have him than not. And uh, I shot him enough, good enough holding spot where uh, where he didn't get away. So. Pretty, pretty psyched about that. We gotta get going. There's a freaking storm about to roll through, so. Uh, I'll see you guys back at the dock. Oh baby, yeah. in the storm. Doesn't look like it, but it's it's coming down. It's coming down real good. Time to get fired up. All right, so I would say that was successful. Got through the rainstorm. Look at the catch. That's a fat mutton. Look at that color. Love the color on these things. Look at that teardrop right there. Blue teardrop. Nice, uh, nice mahi too. It has been too long since I've had some fresh mahi. I might be cooking that up tonight. We're gonna get into filleting these things and I'll see you guys back at the crib.
Got him. Hello? Dude, that didn't even hit the water. No, that's... That was yeah, awesome. How much air they have in their Man, they're fired up. Yeah, <laughs> engulfing air. <laughs> All right, you guys. I got into it right away because I needed to make sure we uh, had some food to eat. Kept it extremely simple. I already finished cooking up the mahi. Dude, it smells incredible. And I did my favorite of all time. I blackened it and I kept it so simple because I really have no intense ingredients in the house. So all I did was use, um, you can't really see it's faded, but it's just a blackening seasoning. You can get any blackening seasoning. And what you, pref it's preferred to have melted butter as your oil, but you don't have to. I went ahead, used what I had in the house because I have no butter, use some avocado oil. And I just got a baser and I base it up one side and then sprinkled some blackening season on it and put it on a cast iron that is like extremely hot and it just seared it. And that oil just cooked it with the blackening season and it's gonna get that little nice blackening crust. And then while it's in the pan, like so, I went ahead and basted it with oil, sprinkled some seasoning, and when I flip these, they'll be ready to go. And I'm actually probably gonna do that right now. So I got that little metal skillet thing. Skillet. Got a metal little, I don't know, what is that called? Spatula. Go ahead and get it, flip it. Look at that, look at that crust, that blackening seasoning. Dude, it is so good. And uh, I think we just have some simple, Veggies might just make a salad and uh, these pieces are going to take a little bit extra because they're kind of thicker um, This is the mutton the mahi is already cooked though. So Now it's just time for the mutton to cook and uh, We might just let this sit here and uh, Cook I might shut it off. Just let it sit there and cook slowly and uh, while we finish this mutt while we eat this mahi but what a day on the water, made it the best of the trip. I can't believe I forgot my freaking snorkel. That sucker is never gonna leave my mask, ever. But whenever we have everything made, I'll sit down, give a little taste test, let you know how everything turned out. All right, you guys, I totally forgot to film videoing eating the fish, and we ate every single bit of it. There was probably about four or five pounds of fish there. So I'm absolutely stuffed. It was incredibly delicious. Unfortunately, I couldn't show you the end product. Well, you did see the end product in the little container, but I wasn't able to give you a, but I wasn't able to show you how it tasted in the moment, but it was delicious. Anyways, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a nice little adventure on the water. If you enjoyed this kind of stuff, go ahead and give this channel a sub. I pump out videos like this all the time. I'm actually going to be packing because the next trip is gonna be a trip down in Peru. I'm gonna do a little bit of diving, a little bit of exploring, and I'm gonna take you guys with me. Do me a favor, you guys, like this video, and I'll see you next week for another adventure. Later.